have a lesson? We want to say a pleasant good evening to um, those who are viewing us via live stream. We hope and pray you had a wonderful day and that you're ready to be to study, get your Bibles and your, your notepads. And for those who would desire this evening's lesson, we, we want to send you to our website, acreagesda.com, and you can download this evening's uh, material study guide. We are about to dive right into this evening's lesson, and we hope that we will be blessed. The text we've been using for this, this series, Christ for the Crisis, is a, it's a prophetic text, Proverbs chapter 27, verse 12. And the wise man says, a prudent man, he foresees the evil and doth what? Hides himself, but the simple pass on. And they are what? And my dear friends, I want to say this. If we do not now act before the crisis, we will have to react. And then White says in volume 8, page 28, we who know the truth, we should be preparing for what is soon to overtake the world as an overwhelming surprise. And that which surprises the wicked should not surprise the righteous. Jesus was never taken by surprise. And I believe if we are his followers, we should not or never be taken by surprise. Tonight, our prayer should be, Lord, hold. Hold this crisis. It is here. And I believe what is taking place in the financial world, in the economical world, in the spiritual world, in the social world, lets us know that we have but a few more dominoes left in this thing for it to come crashing down. We are told we should have been nicking him a long time ago, said Ellen White. But God in his mercies, he has continued things to continue a little bit longer for us to be ready. We realize that we have a series of events lined up. Um, and right as the Sunday law passes, we're going to have a final shaking amongst God's people. Then comes the final sealing. Then comes the latter rain, the loud cry, the martyrs. This now plunges into close of probation. Then the seven last plagues. And then the next stop is the second coming of Jesus. And if we say that Christ is coming soon, and I believe that, then all these events must come sooner. Because these things precede the second coming of Jesus. Tonight's lesson is a very encouraging one. Lesson 13, we're going to be focusing on the early rain. Have you heard about it? We're going to focus on the early rain. We'll begin by asking a question. Question number one now says, what are some things that the Holy Spirit is likened to in the scriptures? You know, throughout the Bible, the Holy Spirit has been compared to several things. Jot them down real quick. He's likened unto wind. He's oftentimes likened as to wind. You'll find that reference in Acts 2 verse 2. He's also likened unto fire, uh, wind and fire. He's also sometimes likened unto oil, the oil. These are metaphoric now, or, or symbolic. He's also likened as to a dove. You see that in the book of Luke, Luke 3.23. He's also likened as the first fruits. Yes, Paul makes mention of that in, in Romans 8.23. But the most prophetic um, comparison to the Holy Ghost. And again, he's the unsung hero. We hear much about God the Father, God the Son, but we don't talk much of the Holy Ghost and what he can do and what he will do. Now, every person that God has their, has their role. Jesus was the one who, uh, who um, made the sacrifice, but the Holy Ghost will finish the work. And tonight we're going to see how we'll finish it. He's also focused likened as to rain. We're going to focus on this for these two lect lectures, which we'll have this week and next week, right? He's, he's also likened as to rain. Now, question two now says now, has there ever been a time since the entrance of sin when God has not worked by the Holy Ghost? He's always been there, believe it or not. In the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, the Bible says, In the beginning, God created heaven and the earth. And the earth was without, without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the what? Spirit of God moved upon the what? So he was there at the new crea old creation, he's also there at the new creation. Whenever a soul is converted that moves from darkness to light, it is the Holy Ghost there working, right? So it, uh, the answer is, there's never been a time, he's always been there, right? And we find some references 
Um, I'm going to ask Ella Burrs to read this. This is from Acts of the Apostles 53. Please read them now. And volume 8, page 139. From the beginning, God has been working by his Holy Spirit. Always been working. Are you with me? Next reference, please. It is the work of the Holy Spirit from age to age to impart love to human hearts. For love is the living principle of brotherhood. So in every age, every dispensation, the Holy Ghost has been working silently, but also imperceptibly to bring about the, the character of God in our lives, right? And we find one more reference in Acts of the Apostles, page 37. During the patriarchal age, the influence of the Holy Spirit had often been revealed in a marked manner, but never in its fullness. So in other words, we don't see him as much as we, we thought we should. We hear much about God, Jehovah, in the Old Testament. New Testament, we hear about Jesus Christ. But where is the Holy Ghost? He's been always working. You know, they say we save the best for last. And we're going to see the Holy Ghost work in a marked manner in the lives of God's people as we near the crisis. Number three now says, now what operation of nature does the Lord use to illustrate the work of the Holy Ghost? And we're going to take flight on these two texts. Zechariah, we don't oftentimes visit Zechariah, but Zechariah 10, he makes this statement. Axi of the Lord reign in the time of the latter rain. So the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to everyone, every, everyone that grass in the field. So rain. Hosea 6 verse 3 says, Then we will know, if we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, the latter and the what? Latter and the former rain. You know, the shepherd's rod teach. And we had a whole series on that. It's amazing that people call me shepherd's rod. I don't know how they get that. Uh, that's just, why would a rod expose a rod? It doesn't make any sense. But anybody who believes truly, they're going to call him shepherd's rod. That's just how we do things, unfortunately. The shepherd's rod teach that the early and latter rain, the early rain symbolized the spirit of prophecy. And the latter rain symbolized the writings of Victor Hutef. That is error. That is heresy. That's not scriptural. The early rain is not Ellen White's writing, but the latter rain, Hutef's writing. The early rain, Victor Hutef, Victor Hutef, he is the founder of the Shepherd's Rod. Now, we had a whole series on the rods. You can go to our archives and you can scroll back to early this year. We had, a, I think, a 14 part series. We went through the doctrines of the Shepherd's Rod. And we'll show you why they are not scriptural, right? But look what Mrs. Weiss says about the, about the Holy Ghost and the early rain. Elaborate, please read now. He will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain. Now she's quoting Zechariah 10 and Hosea. Look what she says now. The Lord employs these operations of nature to represent the work of the Holy Spirit. There it is. Not the spirit of prophecy, not Victor Utef. Not doctrines. When you think of the latter rain or early rain, it is applicable to the Holy Ghost, the third member of the Godhead. Don't let them fool you. It is always likened to the Holy Ghost. Early and fill it in, latter rain. There are two rains. The early rain and the latter rain. Right? Or the early is called the former and then we have the latter. It's the same thing now, right? Now, let's, let's break down these two rains now in, in Palestine because there were agricultural people. Now, question four now says, now, what is, what is the function of the early rain which, 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 which falls in Palestine in late October or in November? It had a purpose. We'll find this in volume, is in Testimony of the Ministry of Gospel Workers, page 506. She says, in the East... The former rain falls at the what? So the early rain and the former rain is the same thing. No? All right now. Watch it now. The early rain fell at the sowing time. It is necessary in order that the seed may what? Under the influence of the fertilizing showers, the tender shoes don't do what? So the purpose of the early rain is to cause the seed to what? To germinate. To, to, to kind of to bust the soil for lack of a word. You need the early rain. Are you with me? 
Now, I want you to follow because we're heading somewhere tonight. Now, now, so we see the focus, focus, purpose of the early rain now. Question 5 says, now, what is the function of the latter rain, which falls March and April? Here it is now, same book, same page. She says, the latter rain falls near the close of the what? Season. It ripens the grain and prepares it for the what? Sickle. For the harvest. So one germinates, one prepares it for the heavenly garner. And by the way, when Jesus comes a second time, every individual will be ripened. Whether you're ripened for wickedness or holiness. But ripe is ripe and Jesus only harvests ripe fruits. So it prepares the crop for harvest. So fill it in now. Now God is using two agricultural principles to bring about a spiritual end time teaching. We need both the early rain and the latter rain, which is the work of the Holy Ghost in our lives. And again, don't miss it now. The early rain is the germination. The latter rain is harvest. If you plan to be harvested for heaven, you will need the latter rain. Go ahead, Sister, oh, Sister Winter. She needs a mic. What's the difference between the early rain and the former rain? They're the same thing. The latter, early and former is the, is the same. Latter is different. It's just, it's just a, a play, interchange of words. Right? Now, question six now says, now, how does the early rain represents the work of the Holy Spirit in the individual heart? Now, in the book of Mark, there's a story about a man who went to sow some seeds. And look what Jesus says now in Mark chapter 4, verses 20, 26 to 29. Ella Burris, please read now. And he said, so is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground uh -huh. and should sleep and rise night and day and the seed should spring and grow up. He knoweth not how. Now question, why does a man go to sleep after he farms? Patience, okay. What else? Why would he sleep? Yeah. All right, he works. Anybody else? He's done his work. So when we sow the seed, that's all we can do. We have no control of a journey. He doesn't know how the seed is going to grow. There's nothing he can do. So we can rest assured. This man can rest because he can rest assured he has done his part. God will then do his part. If the man didn't put the seed in the ground, guess what? Ain't no germination. I don't care how much he prays. So if we sow the seed... We can rest assured that God will do his part. Look what happens now, right? Verse 20, 20, 29 says, But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. Uh huh. But the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. And that's what the Holy Ghost does. He brings forth out the blade, right? Then the air, then the full court. Ella, you need a mic. So fill it in, please, now. It prepares the Christian for heaven. And again, there are three stages we need. We have to get the blade, then the air, then the full corn. That's maturity. And again, this is the work of the Holy Ghost. Ella, you have a mic? You need, you need, he needs a mic. No, you need a mic because they're, 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 somebody's helping us, Ella, because they, they, there are people are watching all over and they, they want to hear your comment and, and, and so forth. The question that I want to go back to, we talk, you talk about the early, in the former rain, early rain, and the latter rain. Uh -huh. All right. And it, 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 those three, and you, you said one, two of them are inter, interchangeable yes. words. Mm -hmm. Right. And the, when we looked at the, the former rain, mm -hmm. what, in what, how would you describe the former rain? Well, the farmer is early. It's the same thing again. Uh, the farmer, uh, 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 all right. The farmer is as uh, early. All right. It's early. We looked at we looked at the the dispensation, mm -hmm. in, dispensational, mm -hmm. in, and we're talking about the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And you, 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 in, in, the, in the time of Noah, mm -hmm. from from Adam to Noah, mm -hmm. what dispensation that would fall into? Well, I wouldn't. It would fall into. Remember, he's always been working. You know. Yes. But yes. We learn in a. In a, but we're going to put a whole lot of thought because I'm going to put a, a date to the early rain. All right. Just work with me. All right. But I see, I see where you're going. All right. And I'm heading there, right? But the Holy Ghost has always been working. Yes, yes, that's right. But he was been working kind of in the background. Because again, 
The triune God in each person has a role in the Godhead. They are trying to bring about a total salvation, but they all have a role, right? Just like the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet have a role, right? But I see it, and we're going to get to it right now. Um, all right. This is what Mrs. White says about um, the same concept. Edinburgh's Prince Reed, this is from TM 506. As the dew and the rain are given first to cause the seed to germinate uh -huh. and then to ripen the harvest, uh -huh. so the Holy Spirit is given to carry forward from one stage to another the process of spiritual growth. All right. One more reference now, same book. At no, point. At no point in our experience can we dispense with the assistance of that which enables us to make the first start. Uh -huh. The blessings received under the former reign are needful to us to the end. All right, so she used the word former, latter, same thing. Former and earlier reign, same thing, right? But again, there's no point we can say, you know what? I've had enough Holy Ghost. You've done your part, no thank you. We will need him until we get to Canaan Shore, especially in the last days. And it's a shame that we don't talk much about him. And there are some who try to minimize him, saying he ain't God. But that is sacrilegious, man. All right? So we want to give him his, we want to big him up, for a lack of word, and give him his props. Question 7 now says, now, what are some occasions when the Lord sends his spirit to his people? In the book of Acts, we're going to try to put a time frame now to when we, we, we think the early rain fell. In the book of Acts, the Bible says this now, Acts 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was what? Why did it say fully come? Talk to me now. Why fully come? Because it was promised. Exactly. It was given in a measure. The Holy Spirit was given in, the, in measure. Yes. To the, to, the, to the church. The church. Okay. At All right. Pentecost. All right. At Pentecost, the full endowment was given. It, it, it was, a deposit was, was made. Uh -huh. But at Pentecost... The, the full measure of the Holy Spirit was... Unknown. All right. All right, good. Now, let me ask you a question. After this Pentecost, was there any more Pentecost? Yeah, oh, okay, okay, okay. What is Pentecost? What would you call that? There were, is, is, there, we had seven feast days. Yes. Was Pentecost one of them? Yes. After this Pentecost, was there any more Pentecost? Okay. Prior to this, did we have more Pentecost? Yes. Of course. Remember, three times a year, each male had to go to Jerusalem. Yeah. Right? But when this Pentecost came, there was no more Pentecost. That's right. Because this was the original. Original. In other words, type and anti-type. But before this, they had plenty of Pentecost. But when this one came, After that, no there was no more Pentecost. No more. That's right. Now, the Jews still kept these feast days, days. but it was in vain. So when it says... Pentecost was fully come. This was the original. There was no more after this. Before this, we had many Pentecosts, but this one is the original. And today, we, we don't want no more Pentecost like that said it. Are you with me? Now, so, look what Mrs. White says now. When can we expect the Holy Ghost to fall in a rich manner? Ella Burris, please read now. The convocations of the church as in camp meetings, uh -huh. the assemblies of the home church, uh -huh. and all occasions where there is personal labor for souls are God's appointed opportunities for giving the early and the latter rain. Wow. So if you put yourself in one of these positions, brothers and sisters, you are in a position to receive the rain. Because he, he, these, are the, uh, these uh, assemblies, the good Lord is willing to give us convocation of church. What's that? That's when churches are started. No, you need a mic, Ella, because I know you got something to say. We, those that are here, they, they, they want to hear it online, all right? Yeah, Pastor, you know, you notice in the, 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 um, the category here that, that mm -hmm. you, you, put, you put up there, the name there, that when you, 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 we talk about germination and harvest, harvesting, all right? No, the question I'm asking in this respect, early, the person can receive the early and the latter rain at the same time? Maybe a minor, it, it is, it is a... No, no, I, I'm, I'm just referring to this, what you, you know. Yeah, but, but bear in mind, it, it's a growth. Yeah. It's a growth. So in other words... You, you cannot receive the full endowment yet because it's a growth. Even the disciples didn't get it yet. 
Because he works with us. Yes. He, he's preparing us. Yeah, that's right. Right? So you're kind of growing in grace. Yes. But it is his job by the end of time for you to get the full maximum. No, no, that's what I'm, no, that, that's the reason, that's where, that's where I'm going, mm -hmm. Pastor. Mm -hmm. Because in, in respect, if you cannot, you cannot, the germination and harvest don't occur at the same time. They don't. Time. They, it, so that's the reason exactly. why I'm, that's, that's the reason why I ask the question. All right, now, question eight now says now. Again, you guys, be free to ask questions, you know, right? Question eight now says now, what prophetic event mark the beginning of early rain dispensation. We want to put a time frame and a date on the early rain now. Now, right, the angel Gabriel returns to Daniel and he's going to explain the longest time prophecy in the Bible. What's that prophecy called? 2,300 prophecy right now. In da this text down, Daniel 9, 24. Gabriel lists six things that should happen within that time span. Ella Burris, please read them now. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people. All right, so that word determined means cut off. So you're gonna, he's going to cut off 70 weeks from the 2,300-year prophecy and give it to not the heathens, but to whose people? So this 70 weeks or 490 was cut off from a 2,300-year prophecy and is given to the Jews. Right? Keep on reading, Burrs. And now? upon thy holy city uh -huh. to finish the transgression uh -huh. and to make an end of sins uh -huh. and to make reconciliation for iniquity uh -huh. and to bring in everlasting righteousness uh -huh. and to seal up the vision and prophecy uh -huh. and to anoint the most holy. Our question now. When a person is anointed in the Bible or even today, what do we use? And that symbolizes what? The Holy Spirit. So somewhere in this prophecy, the Holy Ghost is going to work. You see it in the text. To anoint, that's Holy Ghost, the most holy. So we're looking for this now, this anointing somewhere between the 490 years prophecy. Now, in the Adventist church, some teach there are two dates. And I want to hammer this on because some in this church have it wrong. Some teach that to anoint the most holy began at 27 AD when Christ came out of the water and the Holy Ghost came down like a dove, right? Or some say, no, that happened three and a half years later in 31. Now, both of these dates can be right. We can't have both. We must have one. Now, the word most holy, how do we get that now? Ella Burris, please read now. Focus on that word now. In the Bible, many things associated with the sanctuary are called most holy, uh -huh. including the altar of burnt offering, uh -huh. the golden altar, uh -huh. sin offering, uh -huh. and incense. Uh -huh. All right, so when we think most holy, don't just think a person. It can symbolize furnitures, things. And that is why we have the concept in the church now where we say it's a holy desk. That's why when we buy a projector, we do, what do we do with it? We dedicate it, why? To the Lord's house. That is why when Nebuchadnezzar came and he took the vessels, why did God destroy him? Because they were dedicated, these were called holy things. Beloved and sisters, this, these hymnals, we, they are holy. Because they are, that's why your kids shouldn't write in them. You shouldn't scribble on them. Because we use them for the service of God. Now today, we, we have lost that now. Listen, man, man, man I, was at a, I was at a camp meeting, man. They brought this lunatic in to entertain the kids. Then. And the man had the nerve. He was bringing an illustration. And the guy stood up in the pews with his dirty shoes and began to illustrate Jesus walk. And then he says, oh, these things ain't holy. My own eyes. Somebody misguided him. An unfortunate character. Things that were linked to the sanctuary were holy. Don't let them fool you with this liberal theology. And nothing is holy anymore. We just do as you please. God is love and just praise him. There are holy things. That's Bible. Ella Burris, give me some word, more now. Mm -hmm. When the Old Testament tabernacle services were inaugurated, 
the high priest as well as the sanctuary in its totality, including the most holy place, was anointed. Did you get that? He had to be anointed. I want you to follow me now. Keep on reading now. In harmony with the type, when Jesus ascended to heaven to begin his heavenly ministry, the whole heavenly sanctuary was to be anointed as well, including the most holy place. All right. Keep on reading now. But not only was the sanctuary anointed, Jesus was also anointed as priest king to begin his work in the holy place. And he did not begin that work in 27 AD. He was baptized. He, was, he began his ministry. All right, now keep on. Give, me, give you some more now, right? In the case of anointing for service, the term is applied to the tabernacle itself as well as to all its vessels. Uh -huh. In Daniel 9, 24, Here it is now. a case of anointing in specified in the prophecy consistent with the uses of most holy pointed out above, there is every reason to believe that in this verse the anointing of the heavenly tabernacle is predicted. All right. The tabernacle was anointed for the typical service and true to pattern. Uh -huh. It is most appropriate that the heavenly tabernacle should be anointed for the anti-typical or real service as our high priest enters upon his gracious work of ministering in behalf of sinners. So we won't, I see Adam, we won't apply to 27 AD. It must be said now. All of our pioneers taught that. Rev that Uriah Smith taught it in his book. Please read, um, Ella Burr. I'm going to see Hannah Ella Woodbine. Go ahead, sir. In the examination of the sanctuary in comments on Daniel 8.14, uh -huh. we saw that a time came when the earthly sanctuary gave place to the heavenly, uh -huh. and the priestly ministration was transferred from the one to the other. All right. Before the ministration in the earthly sanctuary began, the tabernacle and all the holy vessels were to be anointed. All right. The last event of the 70 Two weeks weeks. here brought to view Therefore, is the anointing of the heavenly tabernacle for the opening of the ministration there. So you can't apply that word most holy to 27 AD. You are dead wrong. And you will miss the beauty of it. It must be when Christ went to heaven. One more reference. This is from um, uh, Clifford Goldstein, one of our authors. 1844 made simple. Please read. What sanctuary was to be anointed within the time frame of the 70-week prophecy? 457 B.C. to A.D. 34, uh -huh. not the sanctuary in the wilderness, uh -huh. which was anointed over 1,000 years earlier. The most holy can't be Solomon's temple, which was anointed in the 10th century B.C. The second temple was anointed in 516 B.C., almost 60 years before the beginning of the 70-week period. Uh -huh. The only other most holy of significance, then, is the most holy in heaven, the true tabernacle where Jesus is now ministering. All right. Let me give you one more reference on another pioneer. Daniel 9.24 lists this act as one of the major events to be accomplished by the end of the 70 weeks. Uh -huh. Those 70 weeks terminated in AD 34. Uh -huh. Thus the heavenly sanctuary was to be anointed for service in a special way by that time. Uh -huh. A new and special work was taken up there when Jesus became our great high priest in the heavenly sanctuary upon his return to earth. Uh -huh. Having offered himself as the great and final atoning sacrifice, he ascended to heaven to minister its benefits in our behalf. Here it is now. The Pentecostal descent of the Holy Spirit signaled the beginning of his ministry. All right. Since this is the only anointing of the heavenly sanctuary known to have happened, and since it fulfills the requirements specified, the opening of Christ's priestly ministry may be taken as the event which fulfilled verses 24 through 25. All right. Now I'm going to quote Ellen White. You can't say I just quoted Ellen White now. I'm quoting Ellen White now. Read now, Ellen Burst. Christ's ascension to heaven was the signal that his followers were to receive the promised blessing. Uh -huh. For this they were to wait before they entered upon their work. Uh -huh. When Christ passed within the heavenly gates, 
he was enthroned amidst the adoration of the angels. Here it is now. As soon as this ceremony was completed, uh -huh. the Holy Spirit descended upon the disciples in rich currents, uh -huh. and Christ was indeed glorified, uh -huh. even with the glory which he had with the Father from all eternity. Uh -huh. The Pentecostal outpouring was heaven's communication that the Redeemer's inauguration was accomplished. All right. According to his promise, he had sent the Holy Spirit from heaven to his followers as a token that he had as priest and king received all authority in heaven and on earth and was the anointed one over his people now a question based on that math now what time frame now would you date the early reign dispensation 31 AD. 31 ad same thing so from 31 ad we have been living under the dispensation of the early reign we're not guessing tonight. We're not rolling dice tonight. Ella Woodbine, go ahead, sir. What would you say then about the time when Jesus was baptized and he raised from, he got out of the water and mm -hmm. the dove came down on him? Okay. W w is that a holy... Okay, what good is question. It? To the class, online, type it in, text it in. What do you think the answer is? Now, something happened. We're not, yes. we're, we're, we're not denying that. But if you were to use this text to justify that, you'll be wrong. You cannot use the sixth event in Daniel 24 to 27 AD. You're wrong. Now, something did happen. We're not, we're not saying that, but that's not anoint the most holy. This is applied to a place more than a person. It's called Kodesh, Kodeshim in the Hebrew. Now, the question is now, what happened 27 AD? Next week, Tuesday, God willing, I will, I will, I will show you where, we, where you would plug 27 AD in. Okay. All right? Go ahead, go ahead, Elder. All right, give him the mic. Oh, time is again. We need to start that clock. Take the badge of that clock from somebody. <laughs> All right? So, the understanding, therefore, is that... Um Prior to the disciples receive the, the, the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. uh, the day of Pentecost, Jesus was first anointed. Yes. Uh -huh. Simultaneously. Okay. Simultaneously. Okay. Yeah, okay. Hey, because once he was anointed, right. it trickled down. Because remember, when you pour oil, what gets it first? Your head or the big toe? <laughs> your head, because it flows. Oh, okay. So he's the head. Once but, he got it, then the body just... It, it trickled down physically then, yes, exactly. in that sense. Okay. Now, guess what? The Pentecostals don't have a clue about this. That's true. Here they think was. Pentecost was about getting together and speaking in tongues. They didn't miss it. We know the real deal about Pentecost. It was what was happening in heaven, not so much on earth. And don't forget that, right? Now, so here this is now. Once he was anointed, it trickled down. Then the disciples now received it. So we date the early reign from 31 AD. That's the dispensation of the early reign. So, Pastor, so in 27 AD, when Jesus was anointed, it, well, it was a, it, that was a personal thing then. It was, it, it, it was God in segment on him mm -hmm. to say that his ministry, his ministry has his begun. His ministry yes. we, it will begin. So the, the, that in 27 AD was... The anointing of the Messiah. Exactly. Messiah. The Messiah the was anointed. anointed. That's, 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 that's what I, I just want to say. Exactly. In 2780 was the anointing of the Messiah to send him on his ministry. Exactly. Not the most holy Kodesh Kodeshim. Exactly. Yeah. As, 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 a, as, a, as a prophet. Right? Now, question number nine now says now. And this is where we want to get, get it now now. What imperative instruction did Jesus give to his disciples before leaving now? Remember, he rose Sunday morning, he went to heaven, he came back, he spent 40 days. He's leaving the second time. He gives them some imperative um, uh, uh, instruction. What is it now? You found it in Luke and in Acts. I'm going to read it now. And behold, I send the promise of my father. To you, now Christ is speaking now, but tarry ye in the what? Until ye be what? With what? You know, you find this city of Jerusalem all over. We learned last week 
or week before, that the sealing took place where? In the midst of what? Jerusalem. Don't leave Jerusalem. Now, if Peter had gone fishing, would he have received the early rain? Why? Because Jesus told him to tarry where? Now, let me ask the question now. Jerusalem was a big place, wasn't it not? So, did Jesus tell them where to tarry in Jerusalem? No, he didn't say upper room. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. He said tarry in Jerusalem. It's a big place. What are you in the east, the west, the north, the south, in a guinea tree, in a mango tree? You just make sure the tree is in Jerusalem and you're okay. Now, guess what now? If we plan to receive the latter rain, you better tarry in Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is God's remnant church. Now, the church is, bu is big. You have white conference, black conference. It don't matter what conference. You, know what you just find yourself in one of these conferences and you'll be okay. Tarry in Jerusalem. Now, watch it now. One more text. And being assembled together, he commanded them that they should not depart. So over and over, they were commanded to be obedient to Christ. specific. Don't leave. If you leave, no early rain. And Ellen White says, men are slow to learn and listen. That God means what he says. Now, Ellen Burns, please read now. Man, time is against us. Read now. They did not wait in idleness. Uh -huh. The record says... They were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Did you get that? So they went to church. They weren't playing dominoes. You're not hearing me. Or watching Jerusalem Hawks take on the Judea Pistons. You're not hearing me, church. They were praising God in the temple. And the temple were in Jerusalem. All right. Give me that one for me, please now. What happened now? B? They humbled their hearts in true repentance and confessed their unbelief. All right. See? The disciples prayed with intense earnestness for the fitness to meet men and in their daily intercourse to speak words that would lead sinners to Christ. Now remember, Jesus did not choose the upper room. They chose that. They were to remain in Jerusalem. Now watch this thing now. Question 10 now says now, what other requirements? So they had to be in Jerusalem. That's one. What other requirement were needed for the early rain to fall upon the disciples? In the book of John, Christ prayed a beautiful prayer. Beautiful prayer in John 17. It's good to read it. Over and over, he prayed three times that it would be one. 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 They pr he's praying for our because they were divided. They had all kind of crazy viewpoints. They were divided. He prayed that they should be one. Now, what does this one mean? I like what um, one of the, um, the commentaries says, and I'm going to read what he comments. Ellen Burr's one in judgment. Please read this now. In judgment, in sentiment, not in every little thing. Uh -huh. This is neither possible nor needful, uh -huh. but in the great things of God, uh -huh. that God's favor is better than life, uh -huh. that sin is the worst of evils, uh -huh. Christ the best of friends, that there is another life after this. So God wants us to be one in judgment and in sentiments. One also in disposition and inclination. Please read. All that are sanctified have the same divine nature and image. Uh -huh. They have all a new heart, and it is one heart. All right. That they might be one incorporated into one body. Please read. Though they live in distant places, uh -huh. from one end of heaven to the other, uh -huh. and in several ages from the beginning to the close of time, and so cannot have any personal acquaintance or correspondence with each other, yet let them be united in me, their common head. Did you get that? So either you haven't, you, we didn't see Abraham. The same thing he believed, we going to believe. The same thing he ate, we going to eat. And by the way, the same, the same mode that Sarah dressed. You didn't get that one. So if she was modest in her dress, then ladies got to be modest. Be one. Because modesty is not just for the New Testament. It's for all ages. One. One also in desires and prayers. Please read now. 
Though they differ in words and the manner of its expressions, uh -huh. yet having received the same spirit of adoption uh -huh. and observing the same rule, they pray for the same things in effect. There it is. You may be more fluent than I am, but we're still praying, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Are you with me? One, be one, even as we are one. Please read now. Not in mode of existence, uh -huh. but this was not the subject of discourse. Uh -huh. And would be impossible, uh -huh. but in feeling, yes. in principle, uh -huh. in purpose, uh -huh. in vincing, as the Father and the Son had always done, uh -huh. the same great aim and plan, not pursuing different interests or counteracting each other's purposes uh -huh. or forming parties, but seeking the same ends by the same means. So when Christ prayed for the oneness, he meant all these things. And what he meant for them, he means for us today. So... They have to be in a oneness. But the text says now, so they were all in one accord and in what? what? One place. Now, and what was that place? We learned that place that should depart from Jerusalem now. So they had to be in one accord and in one what? Today, beloved, I'm going to say this. As a church, we are not in one accord. Beloved, we have about five churches in this in, within this, within a 50 mile radius. I guarantee you, if you go to one of these five churches and you ask them a simple question on one of our fundamental principles, church, you get five different answers. You get five different answers in five different, and that shouldn't be because we are one Seventh-day Adventist. We get our mandate from one Bible. There's one spirit of prophecy and there's one general conference. It's so bad, the GC says, we're not going to ordain women. So North American says, forget that. That's not one accord. How can the early rain, latter rain fall? Well, we are just fragmented. And that's what has retarded the latter rain. That's why the latter rain will not fall until God shakes his church. And I'm going to show you. Now, how many receive the early rain in 31 AD in Jerusalem. Now, beloved, three times a year, all males had to go to Jerusalem. Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacle. And if you're going to miss one, you don't want to miss Pentecost. That's why God timed Pentecost to demonst demonstration. It was the, the, the best time of the season. It wasn't so windy in the, over the oceans, right? Now, look what the Bible says now. Acts 11, Acts 1, 14, 15 says, and these, now who were these in this context? The disciples, right? All continued with what? In what else? And what else? With the who? Didn't say woman elder. The woman. Now, by the way, let me just stop there because the woman had to be Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of Jesus. By this time, Judas had committed suicide. So if the disciples or the early church thought that God was chauvinistic and they wanted to correct a matter, this would be the best time. If you're going to ordain anybody, why not ordain the mother of Jesus or Mary Magdalene? But they did not. Women were there. They had their role. Men had their role. There wasn't no argument in the upper room saying, Peter wasn't saying, we got to ordain. And Mary was saying, you got to lay hands on me. That wasn't the issue. That wasn't the issue. Now, so here it is now, with the woman and Mary, the mother of Jesus, with his what? Bre his brothers, brethren. In those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said the number of the names together were about what? Did you get that? Get what? Get it. Now, there were about 120, the Bible says. But do you know how much people were in Jerusalem at that time? One to two million. This is not even one-tenth and I'm no math major, but I could do a little something. This thing, 
Not even one-tenth of the population in Jerusalem got the early rain. No, they were in the right place, but they weren't on one accord. So you can be in the church. Oh, yes, be in the average church all you want. But as long as you are not in line with the principles of Jehovah, you are, we are disqualified from receiving the early rain. The latter rain, rather. Only 120 people received the early rain. That's scary. That is very, very scary. And let me just say this, and we're on YouTube, we're live. There was not one conference official in the upper room. I'm not here taking, that's a fact. Where was Caiaphas and Annas and his little imps? They were in Jerusalem, yes, probably watching TV. Plotting. But they were in Jerusalem. Saying, man, I got to get reelected next year, man. You, you got to get me back in the, in the priest, high priest office. They missed it. You can be, oh yes, so it's not just being in the church. You got to be on one accord. And not one accord with me, with Jesus. Because if you're on one accord with him, we're going to see eye to eye. This is a reality. And as the latter rain falls, he says a small number. I pray God, you're that number. And I'm that number. All right now. Now, what impact did the early rain have upon the listeners of the gospel? Elaborate, read this now. And with many other words did, the, did they testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untowered generation. Uh -huh. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. This was Pentecost now. So three thousand souls were converted. Beloved, I've been in this church a mighty long time in North America. I have never seen no 3,000 people get baptized in no campaign. No, I have never seen an Adventist church in Florida that has no 3,000 members. Today, if you baptize 30, you get King Evangelist. And some baptized none. Since the early rain produced this, what will the latter rain produce? This was a drop in the bucket. A fraction. So it tells me today, we should at least be functioning at this level. Because we are under the dispensation of the early rain. It's not that we don't have the power. It's there because we haven't availed ourselves of the Holy Ghost. 3,000 souls. Look what Mrs. White says now as we close. Elaborate, please read. What followed? What followed? The sword of the Spirit, newly edged with power and bathed in the lightings of heaven, mm. cut its way through unbelief. Thousands were converted in a day. Wow. That was under the early rain. Now next week, you don't want to miss it. We will study the latter rain. We think you're going to see some things happen under the dispensation. Now, I see an elder. Here we are today. Today, brothers and sisters, the Adventist church, we have wheat and tears. And we got more tears than wheat. Now I'm going to say this, church. See, a man falls off the bed, falls on the floor, and can go no further. Most of the tears are in position to effect change for the worse. Every, 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 every policy that has been formed in this church to retard truth, suppress truth, hinder truth, was not voted by a wheat, by a tear. And as a result, all we have is just lightning, but no rain. The latter rain cannot fall in this condition. Now, individuals may align themselves and receive it. The earlier rain could not fall while they were jockeying for position. God gave them 10 days to get their hearts together. We have a prophetic 10 days also. 
it will never fall in acreage while we're, we're like this, fighting. Don't talk about, you know what I'm saying? That's why the latter rain doesn't fall until after the final shaking. Because when the shaking takes place now, all who remain faithful will be the wheat. And they will now align themselves to receive the latter rain. And they will do a lot more what the early church did under the dispensation of the early rain. Now I'm going to give you a snippet of Ellen White was in vision. And she saw the church shaken. But those emerged. Look what they did. And look what she attributed to its doing this. That's not even a word anyway. I lost the words. Ellen Burris, please read now. Said the angel, uh -huh. look ye. Yes. My attention was then turned to the company I had seen. Who were what? Who were mightily shaken. Mightily shaken. Stop there. Let me, let, me, let me just get this. Right? I want to go back to my chart. They were mightily, with my chart. They were mightily shaken. So she's reading after the Sunday law. Not before. They were mightily. So the Sunday law now shook somebody. Or shook some out. Look what she says. Ella Burris, please read. You, you have it on your handout also. I was shown those whom I had before seen weeping and praying in agony of spirit. Stop. That's Ezekiel 9. Dying and crying. Where were they? In the Jerusalem. Keep on reading now. The company of guardian angels around them had been doubled. Uh -huh. And they were clothed with an armor from their head to their feet. Uh -huh. They moved in exact order like a company of soldiers. Stop. That's one accord. Same, they, nobody broke rank. They all believed the same thing. They all taught the same thing. There was no fracture then. They were all on one accord. Now look what happened now. The numbers of this company had lessened. What? Some had hold been... On, hold on, hold on here. Had lessened. Today we got 20 million. 20 million going to receive a lot of rain. It's going to be a mighty shaking. That's that 120. Keep on reading now. Some had been shaken out and left by the way. Mercy. I had heard those clothed with the armor speak forth the truth with great power. That's that 120. Keep on reading now. It had effect. Many had been bound, some wives by their husbands and some children by their parents. Uh -huh. The honest who had been prevented from hearing the truth now eagerly laid hold upon it. All fear of their relatives was gone, uh -huh. and the truth alone was exalted to them. They had been hungering and thirsting for truth. It was dearer and more precious than life. Uh -huh. I asked what had made this great change. An angel answered, it is the latter rain. The refreshing from the presence of the Lord, the loud cry of the, the third, third angel. Angels. So you see, in order to give the loud cry, we need the latter rain. But to get the latter rain, you need the early rain. And that's conversion. And to get this, we're going to have to be in one place. That place, not the club. I'm sorry, it ain't going to fall in there. Be in God's remnant church. You can choose your church. I chose acreage. Hallelujah. <laughs> this is my Jerusalem. And we're going to tarry here until I'm imbued with power from on high. And then we can go forth. Give a loud cry. Amen. Now next week we will study the latter rain. If you think this was good, you're going to see some things what we will do if we are faithful under the dispensation of lettering. The brightest days are ahead of us. We haven't seen anything yet as long as we stick with Christ. Go ahead, sir. Speak now. You need a, you need a mic. You need a mic. Last comment. We're going to sing a hymn and lift this evening's offering and we'll part. Go ahead, sir. You get the last comment. Uh -huh. Uh, I just want to make a point quickly, slightly mm. different, mm -hmm. but in the same context. Yes. Now, the Holy Spirit, there's an ignorance that I have observed among us mm -hmm. somewhat when it comes to the, the function of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Case in point, our very priors. Mm -hmm. If the Holy Spirit does not approve it, it mm -hmm. goes nowhere. 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 You're and right. And that is something for us to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. 
the Holy Spirit is who takes our prayers. Exactly. After he do his job, mm -hmm. and we pray to Jesus as we, uh, until we roll over. Mm -hmm. It's not, our prayer will not go anywhere unless he approves it. Yes. We have to be educated, and we should be educated about the work of the triune God. Amen? Let us stand as we sing our closing hymn, um, hymn 5, 2, 3, as we lift this evening's offering. Ella, help us out. My faith looks up to the, my faith has found a resting place. We'll sing first, second, and fourth. My faith has found a resting place, first, second, and fourth. After three, one, two, three. My faith has found a resting place, not in a man-made creed. I trust the ever-living God, that He for me will plead. I need no other evidence, I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died, and rose again for me. Enough for me that Jesus saves, this ends my fear and doubt. A sinful soul I come to him, he will not cast me down. I need no other heaven, I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and rose again for last stanza. The great physician heals the sick, the lost he came to save. For me his precious I need no other evidence, I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and rose again for me. Amen. Amen. Let us bow for benediction. Father in heaven, tonight didn't our hearts burn within us? As we sat at your feet. Tonight, as we leave, dear God, to go back to our homes. May we find them in the same manner we left them. Give us safe traveling journeys and a good night's rest to take on tomorrow's challenge. And at last, O oh God, when you shall come, remember us here at this place in your kingdom. Is our prayer in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. You may be seated, please, for a moment of quiet.